I think it's time for a haul video. Some of you guys know the past year I have been working through a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. And antiquing and estate sailing is one of my happy places. And so while this is going to look like it is a ton of stuff, it is actually um, from a bunch of different shopping trips over the past couple months. But the reason why I wanted to do this haul is because I've gotten some really good stuff that I am super excited to share with you guys. And um, to make it easy, I've actually divided everything up into categories. Yeah, that's a lot. But we're going to start with home decor. It is a tiny but mighty category. This I, I'm so excited to share what I got. And I'll do my best to remember pricing. But as I said, it's been a couple months and I do not have a great memory. But the first couple items I'm going to show you came from an estate sale that was from a town right next to me, which is actually one of my favorite little towns. It's super charming, has a bunch of like really old homes there. And this was one of those homes that was definitely built in the 50s and had a lot of those details to it. And let me tell you, I don't know who this lady was that lived there, but I am in love with her. And she had her own antique store for a while. And when she closed the store, she brought home with her some of her favorite pieces. And this was the last day of the estate sale. Everything was, I want to say like, 70 to 75 percent off something crazy like that and when I saw the pictures I was like there's no way because I saw a bunch of pink stuff and my living room is pink and I was like there is no way these items are still left ho <laughs> ho some of them were and the first one that I want to show you is this little book and vase there are these little fans that are planters that um, I haven't really styled them yet because I don't know exactly where I want them to live but I do think I want to put plants in them but I don't know I'm not a plant person and there's no um, oh what's that called drainage there's no drainage in these so I'm not really sure if I can put actual plants so maybe succulents if you're a plant type person let me know in the comments um there are no maker marks on here so I don't know if they're actually somebody or if they were just somebody just made them all I know is I love them and I think they are perfection and I cannot wait to style them into my living room because of the sale these I ended up getting for the pair for six dollars I am that person who's like oh yes I found this incredible vintage fill in the blank for a dollar well maybe not a dollar but pretty close now if you've watched any of my antiquing hauls before you might already know that I have a thing for lamps and I probably have more lamps than I have surfaces in which to place said lamps but can't stop won't stop especially when they look this cute Mm -hmm. I don't know who they're by because I think the markings are here and there's felt underneath there and quite frankly I don't really care because I love them. They're um, ballerinas, a male and female ballerina, and it has the uh, gold leafing detail on it. And um, again, my living room is pink, and these are absolutely perfect. And these these lamps were originally priced, I want to say, at like $120, and I got them for $65 for the pair. So I thought that was a steal. If you could put a price on love, apparently it's $65. The last thing I picked up there was this McCall's Magazine from 1947. I love collecting old magazines for inspiration, but also I really like reading the stories and the ads and the recipes. And this is like a three in one magazine. So it covers like news and stories. And um, then the second section is like homemaking tips and home decor and then the last is fashion because it is McCall sewing company so you have a little bit of those sewing patterns in the back. I want to quickly show you some of the things that I absolutely loved from this magazine and one of the first things I thought was so incredibly clever was this four meals page. It kind of plans out all your meals. It tells you everything you have to buy for those meals and also a cooking plan so that you can cook ahead and then then you don't have to spend so much time in the kitchen and also these items can be split across the meals and I just thought that was incredibly helpful. I don't know if magazines do that today, but if they don't, they should. 
I love that you not just have the recipes that the magazine is providing, but also ads had a lot of recipes in them as well, which I know we do a little bit today, um, but I'm sorry, the 40s and 50s cooking recipes were just so much more intriguing. Now, I did make one of these recipes, so if you wanna see what I made and how it turned out, you will have to follow me over on Instagram. Which, yeah, the link is gonna be in the description. I also love this article about new suits in 1947 because apparently the fabric restrictions were lifted. So now you see longer coats. You actually see a lot more uh, detail like the peplum in the back or like a ruffling in the back. And you also see longer skirts. And they talk a lot about how the front of the suit is kind of very business-like, one would say, and the back is very, uh-huh, party in the back. It is 1947's version of a mullet, but made fashion. One of the other things I love is looking at the advertisements. And a lot of times some of them are just gorgeous, like a lot of the beauty advertisements. Some of them are pretty cringeworthy with the misogyny, but never, never before today have I been horrified, terrorized by an ad. And that is, um, college girls learn something not in the books. Feminine hygiene products that don't chafe. What? Chafing? They used to have to chafe? Isn't being at your time of the month bad enough, but now you gotta worry about chafing? Ugh, I guess it's not just wings that have been an improvement. The last item that I picked up in this category was from a trip that I made out to San Jose for work and because I had a free day, JL drove up and we had a girls day and we went antiquing and we had a ton of fun. And all I will say about that trip is what happens in the pattern section stays in the pattern section. And I also picked up this Pyrex dish. This is in the Amish print, which is also known as the butter print. And this is produced from like 57, I wanna say, to like 68, somewhere in that range. Um, so I don't think it's incredibly rare. And this is the smaller one quart dish. But I typically around here, I see more of the bowls. And this is I mean, would you call this a bowl? I mean, it's not really a bowl. It's part of their bake store, bake serve store set. Um, and I just really, really like it. And this is the color that I'm accessorizing my kitchen with. And I don't think I got a steal on it. I think I might have paid what it was worth. And let me tell you, this went on my carry on. And I was like, don't anybody bump me. Don't touch me. And I am so pleased that this made it home. Now, of course, it doesn't have the top to it, but the glass tops are not hard to find. So, um, well, I don't think it's anything rare. I'm just tickled pink to have it. Okay, you would laugh if you saw the gigantic tower of fabric that is sitting in front of me right now. So, <laughs> I'm going to do my best not to make this video be 100 years while uh, swooning about each fabric that I found because you know I can do that but um so I'm just gonna kind of go through it as best I can this fabric is from that trip to San Jose with JL and it is this really fun cotton print I feel like this is maybe like late 60s early 70s I'm not quite sure because I don't have a PhD in fabric recognition that would be our friend Stephanie Canada link in the description <laughs> If there was a PhD in fabric, she would have it. Um, and I love, love picking up fabric at estate sales and antique stores because it's just fabric that you can't get nowadays. And I love fabric that has a story to it, but you are limited to the amount that you can pick up there. So um, sometimes the finding the right project for them can be a little challenging. I'm having like a very floral and like plaid gingham moment in my life right now so anytime I see anything remotely like that I am picking it up and I found this very small blue and white gingham cotton as well as this yellow and white and this pink and white that literally hurts your eyeballs it is so bright so I feel like this has to be from the 80s right I mean I don't think we were making colors that insane until the 80s but I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. There's not a ton of this fabric, but you know we're gonna do something cute with them. 
I think the fabric they just showed you was from the same estate sale that these next two fabrics came from. And uh, two of the fabrics that I found were these polyesters. So I'm sure these are from, again, like late 60s. This one, I'm, I don't know, maybe 60s, but definitely if not 60s in the 70s. And it is all, it's, <laughs> this to me feels very patriotic in a way. Um, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but I have some really great 70s patterns that I've been picking up lately that I think I can find a perfect pattern for this. And there is quite a bit here. So I think there's at least three yards here. So I think we could do something fun. This though, oh, I love this so much. And it has like a really nice texture on it. So I think this one would be really cute to make like a little jacket out of. Um, I, and that's another thing. I'm really into the idea of making jackets. Haven't gotten myself there quite yet. Uh, but I feel like this is the year 2023, year of the jacket. You can quote me on that. And then I got the loveliest surprise package in the mail from Morgan from the Sustainable Sewing Shop, which I will place a link in the description to her store where she does um, patterns and notions and fabrics. Um, so go check her out. But she sent me some gorgeous fabrics and this mint green, which almost has like a little bit of like hatching on it. So it almost has a little bit of a linen feel, but it is very light and um, silky. So I'm not sure if it is actually, I don't think it's a linen because it's not wrinkling like crazy. Uh, but it definitely has a linen-like feel, which I am, and I love that color, right? Who doesn't love a mint green? And then this gorgeous, uh, soft mauve, mauve? Is it, do you say mauve or do you say mauve? So gorgeous. I think this would make a, like a really cute blouse. And then Morgan gets me because look at that. We got some gingham. And um, I think this one came from Morgan as well. And I love, 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 love. And the Cinderella of fabric is this blue fabric she sent me. It is gorgeous. It has almost like um, chiffon has been almost like merged with like um cotton sateen or something that is absolutely stunning okay so we are getting through the pile the next two fabrics came from my trip up to milwaukee to go antiquing when stephanie canada was here for work and um she also does have a online store for sewing patterns and fabric as well so i will not only link her channel but her store as well. A lot of good fabric on this trip. I will say I put a lot back because I spent most of my budget on not this fabric that you're about to see but the one after that. And this one I picked up for about six dollars and it is a Swiss dot fabric and it is just so pretty. I don't know what I want to make with this but I feel like it has to be a blouse right. And, um, and this was I spent sixty five dollars um, and I think that is exactly what it was worth. I just, I'm, I'm just gonna show you. It just, it's a, I, this has gotta be 1940s rayon. And I wanna say there's about two yards to it. Whew. So enough to make a blouse. I wanted to do one with like big flowy sleeves, but we definitely don't have enough fabric for that. And um, there is some staining on the fabric. You can see right here, um, which means I am gonna have to work around it or place it somewhere that you're not gonna see. Um, but this is probably, this is hands down, hands down the most precious fabric in my sewing collection but here's the thing I don't want to be the person who is too terrified to do anything with their precious fabric so we are going to make this a um, video that we are going to do together where we sew up our precious 1940s cold rayon and it is going to be the most of the most but you know what that's going to mean your girl who hates doing mock-ups we are going to do as many mock-ups as necessary so that when this is done, it's gonna fit like perfection. Uh, you know what I am realizing? I did a lot of antiquing with friends last year and I loved every second of it and I need to do more of it. So 2023 is also gonna be the year 
of estate sailing and antiquing with friends. Um, I went downtown to Broadway Antique Market and did some did some antiquing with my friend Tammy and her family and we had the most fun and <laughs> when I found this fabric I needed like seven yards of fabric for a moo moo. I haven't made it yet. It's just one of those things that you know you have sewing plans and then it just falls down the priority list and this was one of them but I needed seven yards for a moo moo that I was gonna make and then I found this fabric and Tammy and I are like stretching it out <laughs> in the aisles to to see if it was all one piece because come on you guys right? Is this not the most moo mooey of moo moo fabric you have ever moo mooed in your life? Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Other fabric, it is actually curtains. And when we were in the store, I was like, oh, I could make a skirt out of that. Wouldn't that be cute? I could make like a little skirt because I just found the pattern to be so precious. But now getting it home, it's like very like somebody washed it with a black towel. I don't know how someone could ever do that to anything they owned. Never done that. Did not ruin anything washing it with a black towel. Um, so I don't know you guys. I don't know. I think I'm going to just stick it in like retro clean and see how clean I can get this. And then once I do that, then I can decide like how cute of a skirt would that be? So I got the little ruffle down there and everything. I mean, hello, I'm cute. I'm sassy. Don't you want to be me? Don't you want to wear me? On to probably my second favorite thing to find when out antiquing and thrifting, and that is notions and trims, because let's be honest, these are really expensive. Um, so wherever I can find them when I'm out is uh, perfect. Now, uh, these three were actually from Morgan from the Sustainable Sewing Shop, and she sent me this really delicate pink, lace and I think this would be so perfect for a pajama project because I am all about the loungewear and then uh, this really cute eyelet and the stunning lace trim sorry that was me getting lost on how cute the trim was <laughs> this trim I found at an estate sale. It's kind of stained, so it's another one. I mean, I got it for less than a dollar, but it's another one that I'm just gonna dunk in the retro clean and see what happens. And um, some of it is in good shape, so I'm sure I can salvage most of this. It was dustier and dingier than I initially expected it to be, but I let it soak for 24 hours, and oh my gosh, it looks brand new. What am I going to use it for? I'm not quite sure, but like I said earlier, I picked up a lot of like 70s patterns and um, I think this could be really cute with one of those patterns. I also like to pick up buttons and zippers or anything like that. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them, but what I have been doing is I've been shifting my button focus. Button plan 2022 was I used to buy the big jars of just the loose buttons and then I would happily spend way too long organizing the buttons into different sections. <laughs> but what I found is I love using vintage buttons, but buying them that way meant I never really had, like if I needed eight to do a shirt, didn't have enough. So I've been really into just buying buttons that have multiples to them. But I've also, because as I said earlier, <laughs> in 2023 year of the jacket I have also been buying buttons that will work for jackets and again Morgan just gets me because Morgan sent these buttons look at these buttons oh how cute are they and because this is this this is the vision a cape right where it's clasped right here guys and then let's talk patterns um, again, I'm going to try to um, not gush about all the patterns because as you know, this video would be way too long if I did. So I'm just going to categorize them and we're going to talk about each category. And then one of the things that I've been buying a lot of lately is embroidery patterns. Now, a lot of these are Aunt Martha, which 
she is still out there selling her patterns. So I don't know that all of these are vintage, but I am really obsessed with the idea of starting to use embroidery in my sewing projects. So I'm teaching myself how to embroider right now. And uh, one of the things that I love that I did pick up was this little embroidery of booklet. And it's definitely from the 1960s, but it also has the patterns in the back and it talks about like, you know, smock dress embroidery, right? I just don't love that. And of course, one of the things I am always on the lookout for is apron patterns. I love them. Um, I love making the apron patterns. And just to kind of shout out some of the ones that I found that I thought were super cute and unique is this one from Simplicity. And this one just reminded me of the patio dresses. And I thought it was such a cute apron. And then this one right here. Did I know that I needed a lettuce apron? No. Now that I know it exists, do I have to make it? Yes, I do. You know, one would even say, what if one were to make a lettuce skirt? Possibilities are endless. And of course, talking about loungewear, loungewear patterns. I found a unicorn with the loungewear because this right here, the simplicity pattern, if you look at there, it's extra large. And it is bust size 42 to 44. That is my bust size. I have found in the wild a sewing pattern that fits my measurements. That's vintage. I could cry. I could cry over the fact that I do not have to pattern grade. I will make you better that soon, better that soon. And then Morgan was nice enough to send over some sewing patterns as well. Now, most of these are from the 80s, but one of the things I love about some of the fashion from the 80s is it inspired and borrows heavily from the 40s. So it's really easy to take some of these 80s patterns and give them a vintage twist. The next two patterns are both Mary and Martin, who I love and adore, and also from Stephanie Canada's website, who I also adore. And it is these two dresses. Um, they're both very simple dresses, but I actually love the little jacket that came on this dress. So I'm really excited to make that. And then, as I mentioned, pick it up. This was the only one from this haul that was from the 70s, but she she a cousin to the Moo Moo and Captain and you can see in the bib area that's all that embroidery so I was like oh, that's gonna be so fun and then we have just basically these are really cute uh 60s little dresses and then just the skirt pattern here but I really love the pleating slit in the front of this skirt so that is it. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. And of course, I love hearing from you. So go ahead in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of today's video. And if you want to keep watching more videos, I've gone ahead and selected two videos that I know you are going to love. And of course, if you want to follow me on all the social media, you can find me as It's Jennifer Elise, and you'll find all the links in the description. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!